So during the office hour, there are a couple questions about why the magnetic field is zero outside of a solenoid. And uh, I came up with a, what I thought was a pretty good argument. And you saw the argument that Robert presented in class. Um, but I came up with one that I think is sort of fun. Uh, and it's pretty close to the one that I did in the, in the office hours. But I'll just share it here with you. So remember, we have our we have our solenoid. So I'm going to draw it as a bunch of I'm going to draw sort of this this cutaway view of the solenoid. All right. So we have this cutaway view, and I'm going to make the current come out of this side, and it's going to go in to the page on this side. <clears throat> So remember, uh, Ampere's law is this idea that we have this this contour integral uh, of the magnetic field over some path dl, and that this is equal to the current enclosed uh, by uh, that path dl uh, times mu naught. Um, so what I'm going to do is the the loop I'm going to pick. Is, is going to be the loop that actually encloses a bunch of current. Okay. And uh, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make the path go this way, just for the heck of it. Okay. So, uh, the first thing that's interesting about this is that the current enclosed is actually zero, right? For every one that is, for every little piece of current that is coming through this loop uh, out of the page on the left-hand side, right, over here, there is the same current coming into the page on this side, right? So for this, for this loop, my I enclosed is equal to zero, okay? So imagine we had a magnetic field uh, outside of this configuration. Um, if we just use the right-hand rule, right, we have a feeling that on this side, the magnetic field will be pointing down. On this side, the magnetic, ooh, the magnetic field will also be pointing down, right? So that's just coming from the right-hand rule. Okay. Remember, this is this is our little DL. Okay. So let's let's evaluate let's evaluate this this loop integral. Um. So over a lot of these, right? So over this leg and this leg, we know that the magnetic field in these regions is perpendicular to to this this length, right? Like the magnetic field is either pointing up in the middle or pointing down on the outsides, and everywhere along that, uh, the the integral evaluates to zero. Um, going down this leg, we see that we get. Um, I guess I should I should be so let's make this length here L, right? We see that the, the integral evaluates on the left hand side to P times L. I should call these different things. Um all right, I'm gonna call this one B1, this one B2. Okay. So it's B1 times L. <clears throat> Um, on the other side, right, on, 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 on this leg of the journey, uh, we see DL and B are in opposite directions. So the dot product, B dot DL, and then the integral of the DL, uh, picks up a negative sign. So we actually get minus B2L. And this, remember, before is all equal to zero, because our enclosed current is equal to zero. 
And so we see that we have this equation now, b1l minus b2l is equal to zero. Okay, so this can only be true if b1 is equal to b2, right? Okay, but one of the arguments was, well, this, this loop that I've made, right, this blue loop, I can take this loop any, anywhere I want, and I can, I can actually stretch it out to infinity. So I can make this this line of the loop just be be way out at infinity, right? Mm -hmm. So this equation has no distance dependence to it, right? So what that means is that if if this is way out to infinity, when I'm infinitely far away from the solenoid, I expect b2 to be equal to zero. Right? I expect there to be no uh, no magnetic field way out at infinity. So that means that even though this line over here, B2, is really, really close, it has to cancel with B2 to make it equal to zero. So it means that B1, which is close, must also be equal to zero. So it means that anywhere outside the solenoid, the magnetic field must be zero.